When you look at Senator Sanders versus Hillary Clinton, he's not just up against Hillary Clinton. He's up against the media. Yes. He's up against the Congress. The machine. Yeah, I mean, he's. I don't think he's gotten more than a handful of right. endorsements uh, from Congress. Uh, obviously, he's got his own machine, which are millions, millions yeah. of donors. Yeah. Um, but how does that translate, even if he keeps winning these states, how do you change when you're up against more establishment Democrats who are comfortable with the system of, well, we have to compromise and right. this and that. Uh, and it, a Black Lives Matter man said in Colorado to us, which really struck a chord, I'm all for a woman president, but this isn't the right woman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, for me, the people are going to have the final say. And even though the super delegates, which they are a part of the establishment, have already, the majority of them have already pledged to the secretary, we know what can happen. The same thing happened in 2008 when Senator Obama was running, that most of those, ple those super delegates had already pledged to her. But we firmly believe that once the senator, he's already won nine states, that the superdelegates in those states have two choices. Either they're going to be with their voters or against their voters. So we're going to fight this thing all the way through. We're going all the way to June. And I think we're going to see, not just even tonight, but moving forward, other states like Washington State, New York, uh, California. We're going to see a sea change. And Senator Sanders, the states ahead of us, I think, will be more in his wheelhouse than the states behind us. And uh, when you compare the two, we know about, you know, he wants $15 minimum wage. She says $12, specifically for African-American youth, because unemployment is through the roof. 51%. And he talks about that all the time. He was talking about that way before anybody else. Even Mr. Trump now is talking about the unemployment rate among African-American youth. But he has been talking The man who says wages are too high? Right. The, uh, right. But, but he has been talking about that. Got a little conflict there. But he has been talking about that. And as a matter of fact, him and Representative Conyers, I believe, introduced a bill to inject federal funding to help uh, disadvantaged youth of all ethnicities, but he puts that exc exclamation point on the fact that African-American youth have a 51% unemployment rate to help them, help them because I don't mind, you know, we heard that, I mean, I heard that growing up, I don't mind as the devil's workshop that you have to work and make the requisite investment in our people and especially in our youth because you give them hope, you teach them skills and you give them a future. So many young people, maybe not necessarily in my community, but in other communities, they can't see a life beyond their communities and economics, which is the Senator's thing. He really believes that there is a correlation between poverty and crime poverty and, and and having so many people locked up in prison he talks about on the stump that we have 2.4 million people in prison almost 1 million of them are black we a lot of them are in there because of bill clinton but, right oh yeah because of the crime bill let's be real one of the reasons that i sought this office is to get this bill too many kids don't have parents who care Gangs and drugs have taken over our streets and undermined our schools. Every day we read about somebody else who has literally gotten away with murder. And not just President Clinton, black folk, black folks in the Congress supported that bill too. But they devastated lots of lives. And Senator Bernie Sanders in 1991 took to the floor in that Congress and said, we are, this is not good. And in 1994, he did the same thing. A society which neglects which oppresses and which disdains a very significant part of its population, which leaves them hungry, impoverished, unemployed, uneducated, and utterly without hope, will, through cause and effect, create a population which is bitter, which is angry, which is violent, and a society which is crime-ridden. Now, the Violence Against Women Act and the assault weapons ban was in that bill, but I can tell you as a legislator, sometimes you do vote for a bill. You can't just pick and choose. But he went to the floor both times, and if you play both speeches from 1991 and 1994, you will hear him crying out to the Congress saying, we, we, we need to rethink this thing. We need to do this a better way. We need to invest. Poverty is the problem here. We cannot continue this course of being the only major Major, you know, major in, uh, nation in the industrialized world. We have more people in prison than any other nation similar to us. What does that say about that? And when you devastate black and brown communities like that by taking away the, the men, and then also there are lots of African American women in prison too, you devastate families, children. What kind of future are they going to, they're going to have? Not much. So we have to rethink this kind of stuff. Instead of having more people in jail, than any other country. Let's have the best educated population on earth. 
Senator Bernie Sanders has the courage. I was with him at Cleveland State University in the fall, and it was 10,000 people there, and they were mostly white. And he said to that audience, as the next president of the United States of America, I am going to fight to eradicate institutional racism. Now, it would have been very easy for him to say that in a group of black folks, but no, he said it to white folks. I was in Iowa with him, and we had a racial justice a forum. It was him, myself, and two ex-offenders who were African Americans. It was a mainly white crowd. He said the same thing to them, that as a nation, we cannot continue this course. The five violences against black and brown folks, physical, political, legal, economic, and environmental, and that we, the collective we, white folks, black folks, all of us together, we have to deal with this. We have to, we have, to have a day of reckoning. That's the kind of leadership that we need. He is not afraid to confront what needs to be confronted, but he does it in a way that says that at the end of the day, here are our challenges and our concerns, and here's how we have to fight to change them. See, this man lives this. He was chained as a 22-year-old to an African-American woman who was fighting against fighting against discrimination. But on the flip side, yeah. his naysayers say, all he's done is talked and, and oh, advocated, no, but he hasn't actually legislated. Oh, That's what they say. Of action. First of all, he's gotten more amendments passed than any other legislature, legislator in the Congress. If you look at when he was the chairman of the Veteran Affairs Committee, him and also Senator um, John McCain, Pass one of the most comprehensive veteran bills that have come through in a long time. Even Senator John McCain said that Senator Bernie Sanders is very action oriented. People need to check his record from being a mayor of Vermont to now. He has been in the fight. His actions, just check his record. Not just what he says, but his actions speak louder. Again, honesty and consistency. He has heart soul agreement. And I'm hoping that this nation sees that enough to make him the next president of the United States of America. And I want to say one more thing. We're never going to get this opportunity again. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Candidates, people like him in the elected ministry, they don't come along every day. I think we are touching a nerve with the American people who understand that establishment politics is just not good enough. We need bold changes. We need a political revolution. You look at the trade deal, trade deal specifically, I would think that disproportionately they hurt African-Americans because if a, a, a white individual uh, who get, loses a job mo most likely by the numbers yeah. has an has a higher education. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk to me about what other options the people who have lost jobs in your community have, if any? Low wage jobs. A lot of people in my community and also a lot of my constituents, whether they're black or white, find themselves. There's only two groups in this country. We shouldn't delude ourselves, the poor and the wealthy. So there is no more middle class? There is no middle class. We're deluding ourselves about the middle class. Either you are wealthy as hell or you are poor. Point blank period. Either you're part of the 99% or you're part of the 1%. Now those who kind of navigate the 10%, they're going to be all right. But virtually the middle class has been decimating. In the African American community, we find ourselves saying, what middle class? Most of us are one or two paychecks away from just being totally wiped out. And we need to understand that. So yes, beyond the Great Recession, did President Barack Obama do a great job in, in, in under some enormously enormous uh, circumstances? Absolutely, he did. But when I talk to people every day who are crushed by an economy that does not allow them to to provide for their family, so they find themselves working two and three jobs, which diminishes their quality of life. So now they can't spend as much time with their kids, or even doing leisurely things. Even poor people deserve to be. Be able to take a vacation every now and then, to have some rest time every now and then, and to live a good life. I want to get you to react to uh, something that Donald Trump supporter said to me two days ago. Uh, he's actually an Iraq war veteran. And we were talking and he said, uh, I asked him, why do you think wealthy people need tax breaks? And he said, because they work harder. What, what do I say to that? Uh, I had not much to say either. I mean, we call it the working poor for a reason. It means they're not laying around their house and eating bonbons. They're working very hard to try to make ends meet. I mean, I come from that kind of family. And nobody says when they grow up that they want to be poor. Everybody doesn't run the race at the same play pace. The playing field is certainly not level. And that is what government's job is to do, is to create an environment, create opportunity, whether it's in the business sector or the private sector. They set the rules. They set the play. And that's really what we need here. So I'm sorry that, you know, my fellow a citizen believes that, believes that about his fellow working uh, men and women. It's not, it's absolutely not true. Poor people work very hard. And you know what? It's hard as, it's hard as hell being poor. It's not a pleasant 
experience. Here's the simple truth that in America we have millions and millions of working people who are working hard but are not making enough money to put bread on the table or to take care of their kids, and that has got to end. Devil's advocate, what do you say, you know, to the media? Hillary Clinton says this a lot. We like his ideas, but, uh, ta- you know, tax analysis says it, the, the numbers don't add up. Uh, how are you going to get a Republican Congress who won't vote on a post office name to, you know, st- free, co- free public college, met, uh, single payer, these kinds of things? Does he really have the, the revolution to actually get things through this Congress? Let me tell you something. Even if she wins... She won't be able to get anything through this Congress. And that's why the revolution is important, because Senator Bernie Sanders understands this, that 2016, well, 2017, 18, 19, 20 and beyond is just as important as 2016, because you have to get the type of Congress that you can work with. This Congress, their um, major agenda was to stop President Obama and his agenda. That's all they care about. They don't care. They shut down the government, for God's sakes, and cost the taxpayers in this nation $26 billion. You might as well put it in that building and set it on fire. At the same time, they could have took that same taxpayer's money, our money, and invested in the infrastructure that, that President Obama wanted. But no, no, they couldn't do that. So this is what I say. If we got enough money to bail out Wall Street, the same thing that Senator Sanders says, then we have enough money to invest, make the requisite investment in Main Street. And I also want your viewers to understand this. Beware of any leader that tells you it cannot be done. If we can form a country, a nation against an empire, then, then we can have universal health care. If we can abolish slavery, then we can afford to invest in our young people in this country so that they can get a college degree or increase their skills so that they can live out their greatest greatness. If we can go to the moon, if women can get the right to vote, there is nothing that we cannot do in this country. We should invest in that. And Brother Robert Browning once said this, that man's reach should exceed his grasp. And that is what Senator Bernie Sanders is running for. That's it, a leader with vision. Some leaders are going to tell you to let things stay the same. That You don't need that leader. We have to fight for it, and we are the wealthiest country on the face of the earth. There is nothing we can't do. It's about having the political will to do it.